Hey, how's it going, YouTube? How y'all doing today? I got these animals uh, dewormed. I, I put some ivermectin on their back. This uh, this ivermectin, from my understanding, the label, it says, if necessary, I can apply it once a month. And I thought about it, and I was like, you know what? Well, okay, so my dog takes dewormer. And my dog, take uh, ivermectin is the same uh, dewormer that gets used for dogs. And they give uh the dogs dogs get dewormed every month and so i was like you know what if necessary i probably can deworm my cattle once a month too if i and uh and so i put the 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 dewormer i put on them uh you can actually see it on their back uh let me see uh well it may have dried just a bit but um it, it it's like a it's like this blue solution that it just gets poured on their back and the, the 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 pour on it's called the pour on dewormer but it's called the pour on because i pour it on their back and this pour on dewormer what i found is that it's real good at getting rid of the flies like here here's right here you see that i put it on his back right there like that i put it on little guy's back too but a uh, little guy uh i guess it already dried on him but he had some uh some of that uh that insect dust that i put on his back and so i put it on his back and i guess uh it's easier to see because the it, it made the it wet the dust but this uh pour on dewormer from what i found is like the best thing in terms of getting rid of the flies like um if i put dewormer on these animals back the dewormer uh it'll get rid of the flies in 24 hours it'll just completely obliterate them i mean um all of them the the the, the face flies the back flies the side flies the the, the feet flies all of them the, 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 it gets rid of all of them and so uh when, when the flies start getting real bad like when the flies start getting to the point where i'm like man these animals are probably uh in a state of of constant discomfort that's when i go ahead and just uh dewarm them and i do it to to, to like uh to give these animals a better quality of life that, that's the big reason why i do it and so uh Yep, I got these animals dewormed this morning. I mean, th this grass is growing in uh, very, 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 very well. Got a lot of grass on the field right now. I've kind of been uh, just looking around at things, and man, I, I really want to bring in some more animals. Um, if I could just bring in five to ten more animals, I think, uh, well, e if I brought in five to ten more animals, it's not going to really get rid of the grass, right? This grass, it's ultimately going to have to get plowed under or cut. It's just growing too fast. Um, our spring showers this year are intense. We are getting some uh, extreme uh, uh, spring showers this year. And so uh, the grass is growing real good. And it's warm outside. It's like 85, but it's cloudy. And so the grass, th this cool season grass is still growing in. So I got a lot of grass and I want to bring in more animals. I'm kind of taking a look around. Um, I'm taking a look around to see what, uh, I, I found a few local ranches that maybe I'd go and buy animals from. I'm taking a look at everything. Um, well, I'd like to buy some, li my, my uh, when I look at the animals, uh, a 3.5 weight is what I would consider the, the perfect animal for me. In terms of bringing in, uh, in terms of bringing in animals, I re I'd really like a 3.5 weight animal. Um, a 2.5 weight, they're kind of risky. A five weight, it's just like, man, I'm gonna put, uh, I'm gonna have them for, uh, for about four or five months, or not about, about about four months. Put about 250 pounds on them and then send them back to the market. And so the the, uh, I guess the uh, the turnaround is too fast for me. And uh, I'd rather have a 3.5 weight animal because if I have a 3.5 weight animal that I paid a little bit extra for, I have a lot of opportunity to make money on them because I can take them up to a 7.5 weight. I can I can put uh, I can put 400 pounds on them, and so even if I paid a little bit too much for them when they were 350, when they were 3.5 weight, me being able to put 400 pounds on them before I four to 500 pounds on them before I take them to market gives me a, a lot of room to. Uh, it gives me a lot of opportunity to make to make some sort of a profit and so i was looking at things and i was like you know what uh, i've been i've been putting money away for a square baler and i don't think i'm gonna need that square baler for another two months or so 
And so I was like, you know, maybe two, uh, maybe even three or four months. And so I was like, you know what, maybe I could go and bring in some more cattle. I could go, uh, you know, like for about $2,500, I can buy about five good animals, about four good animals. And so I was like, maybe I'd go and bring in some more animals. And, uh, yep. Cause I, I don't need the square beller just yet. And the square beller is the only thing that I need in terms of uh, something I, I've been taking a look at the market and I was like, you know, uh, if, if I could buy anything that I would, I, I could ever imagine, uh, like if, if I was going to buy something, you know, what would I want to buy? You know, if I could have anything on the planet, what would I buy? And I'd buy a square beller and that's going to cost me about $4,000. And uh, I guess if I could buy anything, I'd buy a field. But a field that that's a uh, that's a different story. Um, that's a, a long term commitment. That's a uh, like I'm gonna need to make a payment on the thing for 30 years. And if I want to buy 20, 30 acres, I'm gonna need to pay like a thousand dollars a month. And so, uh, yep, that's the big thing. Like if I went into the bank and I and I talked to the banker and I said, man, I want a loan. I want a loan for a million dollars. I, if I if I got that loan and I and I took a loan for a million dollars, I'm gonna need to make about four thousand dollars a month to pay to pay the debt service on that loan. The payment on that loan for a piece of real estate for a million dollars is gonna be about four thousand dollars a month. And so, uh, when I have a plan set together for how I can make a four thousand dollars a month, I'd be willing to go into the bank and ask for that million dollars. You know, if if I legitimately had a plan put together to make four thousand dollars a month. I, I could go into the bank and I could ask for a million dollars, but uh, other than that, that, that's all about all I all, all I could really uh, think uh, think of in terms of if I made a list of, of the things that I could buy, it'd be a square beller, some more cattle, and some more land. And so uh, I've been putting my budget together and taking a look at what, what which one should I buy first, uh, how much should I spend on everything, all that good stuff. So, uh, yep. The sorghum Sudan grass is growing in real good too. The sorghum Sudan is, uh, is growing in real good. This is sorghum Sudan grass. Uh, I'm gonna take a look at it. It grows every single day. Here in about uh, probably about uh, four or five weeks. In about five weeks, it'll start ready. It'll be ready to be cut, and then uh, get fed to the cattle. And when I have this grass, I'm gonna uh, well. I guess well, I guess one of the things that I was kind of thinking about that just kind of popped up in my head again was that if this grass is ready, if this grass gets ready to be cut, uh, for me to zero grade, for me to feed this, like if I was just gonna cut it and feed it to the cattle, I'm going to need a whole lot more cattle. I have about 27 animals on the uh, on the back acre right now, or on the back seven acres right now, and 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 the grass is already growing in way too fast for them. I mean, if I was gonna graze the grass in the back with just cattle, and, and I was gonna graze it to a point where it was actually getting grazed properly, I would need probably about a. I would say I probably need about double uh, double the animals. I probably need about 55 animals back there to to graze the grass. And if I start cutting this grass and feeding it to the animals, I'm gonna need like another like a 30, 40 animals. Like if I was gonna graze all the grass on this field via cattle, I'd need something like uh, 100 uh, five weight animals. If my cattle weighed 500 pounds, I need about 100 of them. I got, I mean, look, look, look at this, you know what I'm saying? They are not gonna be able to eat this, okay? This is, I mean, the grass in the back, they're already having troubles with it. They're, they're not able to eat it. And if they're not able to eat it, it turns into a, a pain in the side for me because I gotta go back there and then I got, to, uh, I got to cut it to get the grass to grow back in or the grass is just gonna go, uh, it's, it's gonna go bad. Like once, once the grass starts looking like this, it's like a week or two from, uh, from just dying and not being any good. Like once once it starts, you see all these seeds had seed heads on it. Here in about a week or two, this grass is gonna be no good. And if it gets no good, I'm gonna have to cut it back like this, so that it it, uh, it starts growing back again. 
and I don't really want to have to go back there and, and cut the 10 acres because if I have to cut the 10 acres that's going to turn into like half a day of work for me about a full day of work for me and that's going to be a pain I'd rather just have the cattle graze it but if I was going to graze all this grass I would need a lot of cattle like it, it would be like a hundred animals if because if, you know I'm only raising a five weight cattle like um like a mo or uh, a majority of my cattle are about five weight here in about well when they get to about that 7.5 to 8 weight i'm going to take them to the market and then uh so i only raise cattle to that 7.5 8 weight sort of deal and so to, to that 7.5 8 weight that's I, I only raise them to that point and so um these cattle are not full-sized animals they're not like a full-blown bull walking around the field eating grass because if I had like a 1500 pound bull back there walking around eating grass, I wouldn't be able to, to graze that many of them, right? But I got stalker calves and they're not, they're not too, uh, they're not, um, they're not, they're not full size. They're not even close to being full size yet. And so, um, if I was going to graze animals this size, I would need a lot of animals. And I don't know what I'm going to do with all this grass. It's actually a kind of turning now now that I'm thinking about it. I don't know what I'm gonna do with all this Because if I was like, um, you know, I spent like 350 bucks to do all this and so I, I don't just want to throw it away, right? Like, um And so uh, well, I got to figure it out if, if, if it, um Here in about a, a uh, about a about a month it, This grass will be ready to cut in about a month one week. This grass will be ready to cut and when it, if it's ready to cut, but the the weather's like this, you see how the ground is real wet right now, and and, and it's cloudy, and it looks like it, it could start raining. If the weather's like this, I can't I can't cut hay, because if I cut hay, it's just gonna sit on the wet soil and it's gonna mold. It's not gonna dry because the it's too cloudy. Oh, it's actually it, oh man. Speaking of the devil, it's actually starting to rain right now. And so yeah, but you see what I'm saying? I can't I can't uh, I can't bale hay when it's like this And so the only thing I can do with the hay is feed it to the animals And if I was gonna feed this much grass and the cattle are also on a grass patch in the back And so if I was gonna graze the grass as well as feed this to the animals I would need a ridiculous amount of animals. I would need like a hundred animals and so yeah, I need to figure it out. I need to figure out what I'm going to do because here pretty soon this is going to be um this is going to get uh it, it's just drizzling right now. I I I'm I'm kind of like a just you know gauging it. I'm kind of standing here just seeing how much rain is hitting me and it, it, it's barely anything. It's just drizzling. And so uh but even if it's just drizzling, I can't bail hay. If the ground is wet, I can't bail hay. If there's too much if there if it's too cloudy, I can't bail hay. So if I can't bail it and I got to cut it, the only thing I can do is cut it and feed it to the animals, feed it to the cattle. And if I don't feed it to the cattle and I just let it keep growing, it's going to grow. It's going to grow like that, uh, that, that grass, like, like this grass right here where the, where it starts sticking seed heads out everywhere. And then, and then the grass is going to be no good. And so I got to figure out what I'm going to do. And I'm kind of in a situation right now where, uh, well, with everything I got going on, uh man I, I i need to to feed all this grass i'm gonna need a lot more animals like a lot like four times as many five times as many and so uh when when i did this i didn't really think about uh well i, I need to figure out what i'm gonna do because here pretty soon i'm gonna have just way too much grass and I also spent a few, like, uh, almost like $400 on this. And so I'm not just going to throw it away, you know, like, um, that'd be like lighting $400 on fire. I'm not going to do that. And so I got to figure out what I'm going to do with this. Oh, man. It's a good problem to have, but it is a big problem. I don't know what I'm going to do with all this grass. Like, literally, okay, y'all want to see how much grass I got? We'll, we'll just keep walking right we'll just keep walking around i got th this is only about a uh, 20 percent of it i literally got grass everywhere growing in like this
and I and I can actually see a little bit of a germination. So in these in these uh in these uh in these uh what is it uh these uh empty spots, these spots that I just kind of didn't have uh maybe I missed it with the grain draw. I went over it with the hand seeder and I can actually see some germination happening there, so that's good. But uh just got grass everywhere. And the spring showers that they just started. They shot they started like a like a week or two ago. And so we're still gonna have another month or two of this good uh this good wet weather. But that 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 wet weather also means that I won't be able to harvest any of this as dry hay. And so I gotta figure out what I'm gonna do with all this. Because the only thing I can really do with it is feed it to the cattle. And if I'm gonna feed it to the cattle, I better start putting animals together right now. Because if I don't have the oh man, I got a I got a few big old weeds in there. You see that right there? And that right there? I don't know what that is, but I also can't get in there to pull them. <laughs> But yeah, if I'm gonna feed this uh, this much grass, I need to start putting more animals together. And uh, no, this is what the weed is, but I'm gonna pull this one. And well, I didn't really get it, but it's fine. But yep, uh, I need to start putting more animals together. Literally got grass just all the way around the entire property. And so if I'm gonna, well, I need I need to start putting animals together right now because here i already got too much grass in the back i got all this growing in the cattle are not going to be able to eat all of it not even close and so uh, well if i was realistically gonna gonna feed all of this as feed stuff to the cattle i i and, and, and if i had a 3.5 to 5 weight cattle i need about 150 of them to feed all of this and so I got to figure out what I'm going to do with all this. But okay, that's it for me today, YouTube. Y'all have a good one.